Hey guys, welcome back to the Outdoor Channel. It's sunny and fall here in southern Wisconsin, and today we're looking at the Silverado Trail Boss. And I've got a list of 21 different mods and accessories that you can get from Amazon that you can add to your truck. So stay tuned. As we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Helps the channel out quite a bit. We're going to go over a bit of what this list is and a little bit that it's not. Like I said, there's 21 mods. And when I say the word mod, and if I say it throughout the video, it, I'm saying it very generically. Some of these things are generally mods that, you know, you are doing in your truck. Some of these things are simply replacement parts or accessories. Thank you, Internet, for keeping me honest. Uh, but like I said, 21 things on this list. They are all from Amazon or things you can get from Amazon. There are other things that we've done to the truck here that, yeah, you can't get those parts on Amazon or I've chosen not to get them on Amazon. And there's separate videos for those. I'll leave a link to my channel down below. You guys can check those out. So the 21 different things that are on the list, there are seven of them that are on the front of the truck, two of them that are under the hood, three that I'm calling under the truck, the bed or the back portion of the truck, there's seven, and three that are in the cab. Now the price points on the things on the list are gonna vary a little bit. There's some of these things that are under $20, some that are under $50. There's some things that are some hundreds of dollars and kind of everything in between. So there's gonna be a price point for everybody on here. Another really great thing about the list is it's all pretty much do it yourself. You can do it here in a driveway. You can do it in your garage. You could do it at your buddy's place. You know, whatever that happens to be, you can do it yourself. And for almost all of these different things that we're going to go over, I have a how-to or install video, how I did it to this truck. And again, I'll leave that link below in the description. There are, just being transparent, two exceptions to the list, and they were around the exhaust system where I did take those different mods, and I had the exhaust shop do the work, and I had them welded on. And when you guys see those here in a little bit, you'll understand why. But you don't have to take it to the exhaust shop. You can certainly do it yourself with clamps. Or if you have a welder, great. But if not, you know, there's clamps out there that you can use. The last thing to talk about is fitment. Now, some of these things that we got on Amazon, uh, they fit uh, a multitude of different vehicles. You know, a little spoiler alert. You know, we talked about exhaust a moment ago. There was some exhaust tips. And the Amazon description says they fit a 2008 Charger, a Dodge. They fit this Silverado perfectly. So some of these things will be very universal. Some of them will be more specific to the current generation GM Sierra T1 uh, that I have behind me. Uh, there's a before refresh, after refresh, they happen in 22. So um, what we have here is a 2019 to 2022 and a half T1. More specifically, it's a 2021 Silverado LT Trail Boss. Now this one, not that I think it really matters for any of these things that are on the list, but it has a crew cab, standard bed, and has the awesome 6.2 liter. And without further delay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Sorry, the truck is a little dirty. Uh, like I said, it's fall and leaves tend to make things dirty no matter how much I clean her. But we're going to start with number one. This is an easy one. This is the blacked out Z71 badge. Now this truck being a trail boss came with black accessories or hardware or whatever you want to call it mirror caps and rims and the bumper and whatnot but it came with chrome badging uh lets you get the blackout package from gm and spend the extra couple hundred bucks it's going to come with something like this and it didn't match really well with all the other black stuff on the truck so we pulled those off and we installed these uh, they're right around 30 bucks. There's a few that have a little bit lower or higher price point. I just found one that had pretty good uh, reviews on Amazon. Um, they've been on for four, maybe five months now uh, in the sun. No fading. Uh, hasn't come up or anything like that. So the uh, 3M tapes held pretty well. And uh, they look pretty good. So that's number one on the list. Number two on the list is another easy one. 
just like the previous badge I showed, the 6.2 liter in my case was also chrome and you know, it just didn't fit really well. Now here, instead of pulling the old badge off and putting new badges on, I used a product called Plasti Dip. Most of you guys probably know what this is, but if you don't, I know it looks like a can of, uh, you know, rattle can paint, but this is really just a can of rubber and it sprays very thinly uh, onto whatever surface you're applying it to. In this case, I applied, uh, I think it was six coats and cleaned it up really nicely. And here's what she looks like. Now these cans are around 20 bucks. Sometimes you can find them on sale for a little bit less. And uh, there's more, way more in this can than what's needed to do a badge on either side of the truck. You could probably hit all the badges on your truck if you really wanted to with just one can. Keeping with the theme of easy, number three is the Recon Bullet Antenna. Uh, these are right around $40 or so. Uh, sometimes you can find them on sale. And it's just that. It's an antenna. It's shaped like something that's really, really awesome. And uh, I still get all of my radio stations, AM and FM. XM doesn't really count because that's the antenna at the top of the truck there. And uh, pretty easy to install. I will say I've probably lost maybe 5%. I'm just kind of guesstimating. I don't have any real scientific way to uh, to measure this, but maybe 5% of my reception. So a few areas where I got marginal reception previously, I got maybe a little bit less now, but once I get closer in, it you know works just fine. And I think it's really cool they added a truck. Moving on to something a little bit more interesting is the AVS light shield. Looks like a regular bug shield, but it has an insert that works with the key fob here. And it gives you some pretty awesome lights in the front of your truck. Now this light shield really has four different uh, part numbers on this. <clears throat> One of them is the light shield itself. Uh, I did get some nice 3M cable managers here. The, the kit does come with a few, but I got some nicer ones here. Of course, this cable manager here, I try to do a real nice professional job uh, going down to the fuse box and of course a fuse tap for the actual fuse box. The light shield pricing really kind of varies all over the place. I've seen it on like a Black Friday for like $109, $119, something like that. And then a few bucks for some of the other things I just mentioned. Uh, currently, I see it going for a lot between $150 and $170. So check your pricing on these. They do vary, but a really cool ad for the front of a truck that's got a black grill. Another easy one at number five are these Rain-X windshield wipers. If you don't want to put the OEM wipers back on, these Rain-X ones are actually pretty easy to install. And believe it or not, it's not quite as gimmicky as you think. They actually work really well with the Rain-X washer fluid. And I notice after you use these for a little while with the washer fluid, uh, you'll notice that the rain starts to beat off your windshield uh, when it's raining outside and uh, you know, requiring to use your wipers a little bit less often. So uh, again, I know it's, it may sound a little gimmicky, but they actually do work. And number six, and the last thing for the front of the truck are these last fit LED turn signals. Now for some reason on the GM trucks, they use Unless you got a Denali or a High Country, I think. I could be wrong. But they uh, give you incandescent bulbs for your turn signals. Headlights for LED, the signature lights LED. Yeah, incandescent. So they're about $50 for the set, so you get both of them. They're pretty easy to install. And again, I have installed videos for, for all of these. But they are nice and bright. They are sharp. They are clear and uh, I think they make the truck look a lot nicer on the outside.
Moving under the hood to number seven, and one of my favorites is the K&N cold air intake. Now this does quite a bit for me. It, it improves the exhaust note a little bit. It, uh, it provides a little bit better horsepower number and a little bit better fuel economy. And it does that by removing the stock air box and stock intake tube here and replacing with what you see. You got a giant air filter, a stock mass airflow sensor, but again, this really nice tube that goes into your throttle body. And basically, it lets your engine breathe a lot easier and giving those performance things I was just talking about. Now, there's a lot of different cold air intakes out there. Some of them are very, very good. I've used K&N for years on a number of different trucks. I've never had an issue with them, but there's some other really, really good ones out there. I will say you do get what you pay for. So if you're looking at some of the Amazon budget uh, cold air intakes that are out there, I would tell you to stay clear of those. They um, will not give you the performance you're looking for and uh, they may even actually hurt your performance a little bit because they're, they're not proper kits like this. Now, this is great for a V8. You don't have to have the big 6.2 that I have here. I've done these on 5.3s. I've done this on the Vortex 6. It's all done really, really well. Uh, they run about 350 bucks, so not the cheapest mod out there, but I know after running this, I, I put a lot of miles on my vehicles. It does pay for most of itself over time with the improved fuel economy. While we're still under the hood, number eight is the Pulsar LT. Now, if you have a 6.2 liter like I do, and I think this will work with a 5.3 as well, uh, you need to have one of these. This is not a tuner, it's a programmer. And it plugs in line to your main wiring harness here. And it gives you a lot of programmable options, such as turning off the infamous DFM or an older version would be AFM right or what's also known as cylinder deactivation or skip fire turns that off it turns off the auto stop start right you don't need to hit the button every time you get in you can adjust the throttle sensitivity uh, there's five different settings for that you can do some other things like if you put a different differential in or change the tires if you put some kind of lift in all of it is programmable with this guy here so Biggest thing for me, again, is the turning off that DFM, cylinder deactivation, or dynamic fuel management. I should be calling it the right thing. Uh, so there's no lift or failures that's going to be happening here with this engine. This is probably one of the more expensive mods, or maybe the most expensive mod I have in a truck here, from this list at least. Uh, these generally run over $500. They're, they're not cheap. Sometimes again around a Black Friday, sometimes you see sales on them. Uh, so check around. I think I got this one for like 450 bucks on a Black Friday a couple of years ago. So, you know, like I said, look around. Otherwise, uh, you may be spending, you know, north of five on them. Moving on to number nine in an area I'm calling under the truck. This is the Husky wheel liner and it's just some molded plastic it's an insert that goes in your wheel well now depending on what package you get when you pick up your truck some trucks have something here already from the factory uh, this one did not this one was just bare painted metal uh, and you know very easy for it to get rock chips and possibly you know start the rust out over time so it's just some plastic, it, it just fills in here and there's some clips that retain it so it's not going anywhere. I've had this in here for about a year and a half and uh, it's been perfect, no issues with it. It's not terribly hard of an install. You can do it, I think, with uh, little and old tools if I remember right. Again, I have install videos on, on how to do a lot of these things. But something that you can pick up for under $100, I think in most cases, it looks way better and it protects your truck. And while we're staying under the truck, another one of my favorites is the Borla Attack Muffler. Now the previous Silverado that I had, I just straight piped it. This one I said, I want something a little different. 
and this Borla attack is fantastic. It's one of their crate mufflers. When I installed it, I did remove the infamous valve that GM puts on these trucks. These will run you about 250 260 and again, pricing changes over time. Uh, so again, not the cheapest mod that's out there, but man, this, this attack muffler from Borla is absolutely fantastic. And I'll let you guys listen to it here in just a second. And at number 11, while we're still talking about the exhaust or these quad exhaust tips, these are, again, fantastic. I removed the Chrome HDMI ports. They see pretty much on all or well, really most of these trucks. And we put these tips on here. And like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, all of these things are do-it-yourself, except for these. I And the reason for that, when I did them, I took them to the muffler shop so they could weld them on, but I also took off the resonators. And it's a much improved sound. I mean, the Borla attack by itself was fantastic, but in having these, it's just like the icing on the cake. They look great. Uh, they sound great. Believe it or not, exhaust tips do change your sound a little bit. And, of course, removing the, the valve and the resonators, you know, it's just all together. It's a great way to do your exhaust without having to spend all that money doing a capex system that could be a thousand dollars two thousand dollars depending on what you get and uh you know what kind of quality that you get i think i spent a little over a hundred dollars on the tips for both of them they're um, apparently stainless steel and so far having them on here for the last i don't know four or five months they haven't rusted or anything like that so like I said, a little over $100, and then whatever, if you take it to a muffler shop, whatever they charge, again, that cutting off the resonators, unless you do that yourself, you could be looking at 100 to 200 bucks to get those welded on. Moving on to the bed of the truck, at number 12, we have a badge delete. This would normally have a Silverado here, in my case, an LT there. And they're not there, as you look at my wonderful, dirty tailgate. And the reason for that is, just like I said earlier in the video, I've got all this black, beautiful hardware in the truck, the bumpers and the rims and caps and things like that. And the Silverado and LT were chrome and just, you know, didn't look really good. So to do that, as well as some of the other work in a truck, I have this rub wheel, or sometimes referred to as an er eraser wheel, pardon me. Now this is a piece that goes in your drill, and you run that in your drill, and it spins, and you can get all of your gunk off behind all of your badging here. And then you can clean it with some kind of stone or, or just some polish, whatever works for you. So there's an easy one. These things... Uh, have a lot of different price points. 3M makes a really, really nice one. Now, if you get a 3M one, you're probably looking at 30, 40 bucks or around that you know range. This is one of the no-name Amazon ones. It works just fine. I think I spent under $15 for this. And again, it can be used, you know, to delete things or if you're changing out things like I did here and spoke about a moment ago with the black badges, right? This had chrome ones on here, remove that used my rub wheel, cleaned all that off, and then put on my new badge. On to 13, Can go ahead and open this up. Is this tonneau cover. Now this one's by a company called Gator, and it's one of the, I suppose, more well-known companies out there making tonneau covers. However, if I had to guess, looking at these covers that are kind of between two and four hundred dollars, whether they're Gator or Access or Truxedo, I think and again I'm guessing here, they're all made at the same factory. They all carry the same basic hardware, 
and uh, attaching points, and they're all, of course, vinyl, right? But this one's a soft roll-up cover. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed here. And this one happens to sit on the inside of the rails like this. There are other ones that sit on top of the uh, cap here. And uh, you know what? I've had this one for going on, I think, two and a half or three years. And other than maybe just a little bit of sun fade, it's held up extremely well. My bed stay is nice and dry. And again, a couple different price points on this. Uh, look for when they're on sale. But I think I got this one for around $250 uh, on some kind of sale. Uh, and of course, they can go up from there. couple of more accessories back here that are I think fantastic and one of them is this truck bed net that you see here it just clips on to your tie down points on either side this particular one happens to have a an area in here that you can actually put stuff in here which is great for groceries and there's a little clip there so um, you can separate things in the back to the front um, if you have like loose items, like, you know, going to the grocery store, you got gallons of milk or a couple loose bags. Again, you can, you can put them in the middle here. They won't go anywhere. And I think this is like uh, between 20 and 25 bucks, maybe less. There's a few different ones out there in the market. You guys can check those out. But this is the, uh, bed net that I use. Uh, again, I think it's been here for about two years. It's starting to wear out a little bit. I've got a zip tie in the corner there holding up part of the netting. But it's been used pretty pretty well over the last couple of years. And like I said, for $20 or $25, whatever these run now, uh, it was a great purchase. Number 15, at least I think it's 15. I'm losing count here. This is the Easy Retriever by Access. And it's just a rod with a handle and a hook at the end and it telescopes. And bear with me, I'm doing this one-handed. Actually, I have to take a couple steps back. It goes out so far. And then you can twist it, and it'll lock into place. And it's really, really long. And you can go into the back of your bed, whatever has gotten back here, and you can grab it. Now, this is a standard bed. So this is a six-and-a-half-foot box. I can get all the way to the back and pull whatever I need forward, just like that. Now, there's a lot of different versions of this on Amazon. I know sometimes the access model is not always available, and sometimes it is. Um, I like the access one because this one is somewhere between 8 and 9 years old, and it's been rolling around the back of one of a few different trucks I've had for 8 or 9 years, and other than some cosmetic wear, it's held up really, really well. So depending on what you get, if you can find the access one on Amazon, great. I'll put that link down there. If you get one of the other ones, the price point's a little less. Maybe it's between $30 and $40. This one, I think, would be a little bit more. Um, but again, this access one has lasted a very, very long time. At number 16 is the Truxedo Saddlebag. Now, this is a much older version out there. Uh, they used to call it truck luggage. I think now it's just called a saddlebag. Now, this actually comes with hardware where you can take this bag and hang it like in an area over here up from your the bottom of your rail here or your bed. Just like the Access Easy Retriever, this is again about eight or nine years old and it's just kind of worn out a little bit. But it's basically a bag and it's got some rigidity to it. It's got some pieces of plastic that, that line the, uh, the padding here. And in my case, I keep all of my straps and bungee cords and things like that in here so they're not flopping around, they're not in the way, and they're not taking up space elsewhere. So, like I said, this, this comes with a different mount, and it may make it getting in and out of this a little bit easier than what I have here on top of my wheel well. Um, and I just have mine strapped here. But again, uh, you get it, check it out on Amazon. Um, it's a neat little ad. It's probably not as good as some of those boxes that you can mount uh, that are made out of a hard ABS plastic here that will fold out, things like that. It's not as good as that. Uh, and the reviews will tell you that. 
but something for you know a third of the price uh, you can still get a lot of use out of it again i know mine's a little beat up here but again it's eight to nine years old and it, it's done its job Now GM did kind of another dumb thing here. They've got some really nice, well done LED tail lights, but they use an incandescent bulb here uh, for the backup here in the tail light. And I'm probably not gonna get it to um, come on. I'll show some footage here at, at nighttime with it coming on. But you can get last fit bulbs where you can pull this assembly out. And again, I have some video footage of that, it's not hard. And you can pull that incandescent bulb out of that little cavity there, put in a nice last fit LED bulb. And one, it looks a lot nicer because it's all LED, but two, it actually puts out uh, a lot more light when you're backing up. This is the stock light bulbs. Puts out a fair amount of light, but you can tell it's incandescent. Nothing really special here. And man, that is just, <laughs> that is just bright. Number 18, in the same way, there was incandescent bulbs here for the tag lights or license plate lights, depending on where you are here in the country. And I replaced those again with last fit LEDs. Uh, again, a lot brighter, it matches what I've done with the tail lights here a lot better. Uh, I think these are $15, $20 for the set of them. Um, super easy install, you go up underneath and uh, you just untwist the housing, you pop the incandescent bulb out, you put the new bulb back in, pop it back in place and you're good to go. Moving inside the truck, another easy one are these rubber inserts and they're throughout the truck. And what's nice is you can take them, you can pull them out and you can clean them. This one needs to be cleaned because I use my truck. And they're throughout back here as well in the back doors. It comes with one here in the middle, but this is a Boost uh, wireless cell phone charger. So I don't have one there in the middle. And uh, they've got a little bit of material in the back so they don't slide around or they have some adhesive so they, they stay in place. And I think they match the red recovery hooks in the front and the trail bus sticker on the side uh, pretty nicely. Uh, I think they're right around $25. And it's just kind of a neat little thing that you can do to spruce up the interior a little bit. At number 20, this is the Rove R2 4K. Sounds like something uh, you'd hear out of Star Wars. And it's what you see. It's a dash cam. My not so humble opinion, anything that you're using for a daily drive or out and about should have a dash cam in it because we live in this stupid and crazy world. Really good resolution. There's an app on your phone that you can use where you can take video from this and put it right on your phone. There's also an SD card in here where um, you, know, you can take that and... Um, uh, put on some kind of device that takes an SD card, a laptop, or something like that. Has everything that you want in there, GPS speed, all that good stuff on there. It moves uh, just like I showed you there. The install is not terrible. I do have an install video uh, shortly on my channel, if it's not there already, that uh, how I wired this in really nicely up under the liner and down the A-pillar and then, of course, down to a fuse box. That's around the corner there with a fuse tap. But there is the dash cam. Last up at number 21, and really this could have been 21 and 22, there's a bonus here, is some storage solutions for your center console. This one's got this first piece here, and they got a few different versions of this. Uh, this one's got a, a well that's a little bit deeper than the other, so you can put a box of Kleenex in there. And then this other one, which is really more of a divider, comes in a few different pieces and you snap these together and uh, they allow you to organize your center console here without just having stuff thrown everywhere. So I've got some media stuff here, some tools, some hygiene, first aid, cleaning supplies, and uh, 
you know, it's all nice and clean and tidy and tucked away. All right, guys, there you have it. There's 21 with a little bit of bonus things that you can get from Amazon that you can do to your truck yourself or you can get as a gift for that truck person in your life. The holidays are coming up, birthdays, whatever that might be. So again, if you like this type of content, like and subscribe. It helps the channel out quite a bit. And we will see you next time.